Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point EFR Talk. Just briefly, I want to close the loop on the judge's ruling in Idaho before we get to our special guest, Ray Moore, who is on our decision-maker line, candidate for lieutenant governor in the state of South Carolina. But again, going back to what I'm urging Governor Otter of, of the state of Idaho to do is simply defy this judge's ruling. It is unconstitutional. It trashes the Idaho Constitution. It violates the federal Constitution, which gives absolutely no authority to the central government or any agent or branch of the central government, the federal government, to dictate marriage policy to the states. And it defies a Supreme Court ruling that says that power to define marriage belongs exclusively to the states. In other words, this is a completely bankrupt ruling from a moral standpoint, from a legal standpoint, from a constitutional standpoint. It's got no legal, moral, or constitutional force, and Governor Otter should simply refuse uh, to obey it, should refuse to follow it. You know, the founder said, rebellion against tyrants is obedience to God, and I'm thinking it's time for a little obedience to God, time for some judge to rebel for a little rebellion against these judicial tyrants and if Governor Otter were to do that, if he were to be the first one to rebel against these judicial tyrants, again, he wouldn't be breaking the law because this isn't a law. It is a ruling. A judge's ruling is not a law. It's a ruling. In this case, it's flatly unconstitutional. And Governor Otter could make American history if he'd be the first one to step up and engage in a little bit of rebellion against these judicial tyrants. And that brings us to our special guest. Ray Moore is the guest on our Decision maker line. He is a candidate for lieutenant governor in the state of South Carolina, where Nikki Haley is the governor. It's kind of a crowded uh, race there. He's got three other candidates in the ring vying for the Republican uh, nomination. Ray, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Hey, thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you on the program, Ray. And let me ask you this uh, uh, question. Uh, let's just kind of start with the basics. We have people in South Carolina listening to us, other people around the country that maybe dimly aware of political life in South Carolina, maybe you've heard of Nikki Haley, a lot of people aware of Tim Scott, the only uh, black senator in the United States Senate, and he's a Republican, and he's from the state of, of uh, South Carolina. But uh, tell us, Ray, why you decided to throw your hat into the ring for the position of lieutenant governor in the Palmetto State. Well, I've been a leader in uh, Christian education, homeschooling uh, nationally through my ministry the Exodus Mandate Project, that's uh, exodusmandate.org, and we've been an advocate for Christians and uh, churches and families doing Christian education or homeschooling really for 15 years through that ministry. And I've been sort of disappointed. The uh, agenda's languishing a good bit uh, in the churches. Uh, the churches are very slow to uh, take up this uh, necess uh, necessity of, of providing Christian education. Pastors are very slow to uh, lead their flocks. And, of course, the Republican Party in our state has run on school choice and advocated school choice or educational freedom. But then when they get in a governing position, they abandon uh, those issues. So uh, back in January, the uh, lieutenant governor, Glenn McConnell, announced that he was not going to run for re-election. <clears throat> so that opened up a whole new scenario where there was no incumbent. And I saw an opportunity just to step into the race and uh, advocate uh, for school choice and for Christian education, homeschooling, and private education, and particularly for Christians to step up and provide uh, more Christian education services for their own uh, own people. And uh, so that's, that was uh, the actual uh, motivation that caused me to seek the office. Well, one of the things that's pointed out here, I'm looking at one of the profiles uh, on you by Tim Brown and FreedomOutpost.com, and you uh, talk about the just some of the sobering statistics about what happens to elementary school children who are involved in the government education system and what happens to high school students uh, that are involved in the education system. That's pretty sobering. How many, how many students are lost to the visible church as they right. go through the public education system. Talk yeah, to us about the church, that. The churches and the pastors and the families are really being negligent in, uh, in this area. I, I hate to have to say that, actually. Uh, and so I'm really trying to challenge uh, the good people, the conservative, the Christian people, and the churches and the pastors to do the right thing for their own flocks 
And in doing that, they may actually have a tremendous effect on uh, those outside the church and uh, on the culture as well. Um, we've got uh, documentation that as evangelical Christians who public school their children through their entire career, <clears throat> 70 to 80 percent of those children from conservative churches are abandoning the church and the Christian faith in their early adult years and about 20% do return uh, to the church when they get older and start having their own families. But that's pretty bad. And uh, we're just losing the whole next generation because of the irresponsibility of, of, of Christians and pastors to take a lead in this area. So <clears throat> really running to challenge the uh, uh, body of Christ and the churches as much as the political system. And, of course, having taken this position, it's created quite a controversy. Uh, we were attacked on Huffington Post on the 23rd of April <clears throat> for our education position. I made a speech at, uh, April 12th at the Customs House, the historic Customs House in Charleston, South Carolina, before a 9-12 uh, Liberty Rally, where I called on uh, conservatives and Christians to, you know, get out of the government schools and go only into private Christian homeschooling, and the left has gone into a frenzy over it. Uh, mm -hmm. They're smarter than we are. They know what this means uh, to their uh, uh, control over the children over the, and over the culture, because if we at the church, the body of Christ, would step up and take responsibility and take the destiny of their own children to their hands, it would change all the uh, formulas and equations that are against us. You were just complaining a few minutes ago about same-sex marriage. <clears throat> well, why do we have same-sex marriage? Well, the culture has changed, and people's thinkings have changed. It's not just the courts uh, that we have to worry about on that, Brian. Uh, there's a report, the Pew study has shown that even among the millennials, and even the millennial, that's the 18 to 34-year-olds, uh, a lot of them are in our churches, that they, are, they do not have the same uh, rejection of same-sex marriage that uh, people older like me do. So we're losing the uh, whole next generation on moral issues, and that's primarily because of the indoctrination that's gone on in public schools. So if Christians are serious about this culture war, uh, they'll get their kids out of the enemy schools and get them into Christian schools and homeschooling. You know, you've got a little um, uh, kind of a slogan or a mantra or a motto here that uh, is really kind of striking talking about a sub-theme of your sort of message, a sub-theme would be, quote, every church a school, every parent a teacher, every pastor a headmaster. Right. Uh, and so you're really calling for the church to become involved in the process of education. And let me ask you this question. I've often thought about this. In fact, we've been following this issue out in New York where these charter schools have been kicked out of uh, public schools. They've been kicked out of uh, some religious buildings they've been meeting. And finally, the mayor of New York, uh, due to the clamor, he's allowed these charter schools, which are basically public schools, they use taxpayer uh, money, to meet in buildings that are owned by the church, by the Roman Catholic Church. So you've got schools there meeting in buildings that are owned by the church. And it's often struck me, and again, the issue of funding would be a separate issue, but it's often struck me, Ray, talking here with Ray Moore, candidate for lieutenant governor in the state of South Carolina, uh, who, who one of the primary messages in his campaign is school choice and getting the church back involved in education. But you've got church buildings that have auditoriums, they often have gymnasiums, and they have classrooms that sit empty, largely empty, Monday through Friday. And this is exactly the same time when schools meet, when they could use an auditorium, use a gym, could use classrooms. It just seems kind of tailor-made for the maximum use of these resources that belong to the kingdom of God to start opening these facilities up for the purposes of education, reclaiming our culture. Right. I, when I ride down the street, I don't see churches. I see empty school buildings that are for churches. Yeah, it's, 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 it's absolutely unconscionable how irresponsible churches and pastors have been in this area. We have, uh, uh, we have all the facilities are there. We have the children. We have the budgets. In many cases, of course, they have to readjust their budgets in some cases for facilities. But, uh, and many of uh, these public school teachers, so Christians, might leave the public school system and come over and staff uh, this new uh, Christian school system that's waiting to be born right in our backyard, right in our churches. 
Now we got about and, just a couple. We have just a couple minutes left, Ray, and I want to kind of get to what you think the government can do about this. I mean, I've often been a fan of the principle that education dollars ought to follow the child to the school of the parent's choice. I don't care what school it is, whether it's private, parochial, <clears throat> home, public. Wherever the parents want to put the child, education dollars ought to flow to that school. No questions asked. Let the parents decide. They love their kids more than anybody uh, in, in the world. And, of course, you'd run into some church-state issues. But is that the kind of model you've got in mind? Or well, how, how, what, what could, what could before, government do here? Yeah, before we get completely away, let me put my web page out so people can find me. It's a voteraymore.com, voteraymore.com, and they can make a donation there if they would be willing to, and they can see the Huffington Post attack and the speech that I made in Charleston on April 12th, which is going all over the Internet, both the uh, conservative and liberal blogs. Now, briefly on the other question, well, I Ray, am I'll not... Uh, Ray, I'll tell you one thing. If, uh, if you're on the Huffington Post, there is no such thing as bad publicity if it's right. coming from the Huffington Post, because we all know the orientation of the Huffington Post. If they're going after somebody, it probably means that guy is doing something right. Anyway, oh, yes. fin- I, consider, I consider it good news. It uh, certainly is. And it's a lot, one of the largest inter- Internet sites in the country with about a million daily readers. So now we're having con- Christian and conservative sites to come to our defense. Hey, so, Ray, I, g- I got about 45 seconds. If you can summarize for me what you think government can do about this. Well, I really want the government to stay out of it. We are, we're not in favor of government schools, and we think the voucher, the tax money voucher, could be dangerous to the freedom and autonomy of Christian schools. So I don't really favor government subsidies or government aid to uh, private and Christian schools. Some of the tuition tax credit programs and scholarship programs that are being advocated might be safe, but a straight uh, tax funded voucher to private Christian schools would bring government control back mm. into the Christian schools, which is what we need to avoid. Mm. So the goal would be to get the government out of education altogether, turn that back over to parents and to church communities. My guest yeah. has been Ray Moore's candidate for lieutenant governor in the state of South Carolina. His website again is voteraymore.com, voteraymore.com for more inter- uh, information. Thank you, Ray, for being with us, and God's best to you as you pursue public office. Thank you. Focal Point AFR Talk will be right back.